Welcome. My name is Mr. Rex, and today's story is one of adventure and wonder. It's the story of a man known as the Dragonborn, a man who followed fate to the very ends of the world and came back, at least for a time. Problem is, for this story to be told, we need to go back a bit, back to a time of troubles where war raged between two sides. Why is this important, you ask? Because the resulting backlash of this war will have tremendous profound effects in Skyrim, effects that went on to influence the Dragonborn dramatically in its dealings. So listen up. On one side, you had the Third Empire, though not so great this one was. At one point, this empire had conquered the entire continent, but now, having lost much of its power and influence, it reels and breaks as the remaining members struggle to keep united. It consisted of Cyrodiil, a rich, verdant land inhabited by humans of all kinds and creeds. Hammerfell, a land rich in mountains and deserts, inhabited by red guards, dark-skinned humans. Skyrim, the lands of the north, filled with snow peaks and tundras, inhabited by the Nords, rugged and light-skinned humans. And High Rock, a varied land with forested peaks, hardy mountains, luscious grasslands, and big lakes. Home to the Bretons, the descendants of an intermingling of humans and elves of old. Basically, half-elves. On the other side of the conflict, you have the Aldmeri Dominion, a collection of provinces brought together by the Thalmor in order to propagate the idea of elvish superiority over men. The Aldmeri Dominion consists of the Somerset Isles, the beautiful lands of the High Elves, Valenwood, an enormous forest province filled with giant migratory tree cities, home to the Bosmer, the Wood Elves, and elsewhere, a land divided by two. The Batlands in the north, featuring deserts and crags, and the south, a land of dense jungles and woodlands, home to the Khajiit, a bestial race of cat-like humanoids. Humans versus elves. Classic, is it not? Traditional, really. The reasons for their struggle always changes, but rivals they always are. I would like to think that we would be different, you know? If elves existed, that is. That we would live in communion. Love thy neighbor, after all. But who am I kidding? Of course we wouldn't. The battle raged, and it was brutal. The elves, though, after all, proved to be victorious. In order to avoid the complete destruction of the Empire, they signed a peace treaty, though, of course, being the losing party in the proposition, they had to concede to a certain couple of things, most of which are unimportant to our story, but for one singular thing. The banning of Talos as a god. Talos, up to this point, was the god of man and war. He was a mortal, you see, like you and I. But unlike us, he conquered the known world. In fact, he was the one that created the Third Empire we recently just talked about. With his armies, he brought peace and prosperity to the continent. The humans believe that the gods of this world rewarded him for his accomplishments with a place by their side. Talos had ascended from simply being a mortal conqueror into a god. Of course, the elves always resented this. A man who had conquered their own cities and now was praised as a god. You have to understand that even though these provinces are very much separated and segregated, they all basically believe in the same gods. So having this newcomer rise in this way was contested by the elves. The emperor, however, signed this to be as part of the peace treaty and as such, Talos was banned from being worshipped. And now we're back to Skyrim, where everything I just talked about is crucial for the understanding of this story. <sighs> the Nords. They are a traditional people, 
with powerful customs and a rich pass. You see, the Nords have a particular heaven that is specifically designated for them. A holy place called Sovngarde. It is believed that any Nord who dies with honor gets to go to this heaven, regardless of how they live their lives. Do me this favor and imagine for a second how it would feel like for you if you were guaranteed to go to an infinite existence, an existence of drinking, eating, sex, and laughter, merely for the simple notion of dying with honor. Of course, the first question would be, well, what does honor actually mean? <laughs> but for the Nords, that is a very clear proposition. For honor to them has always been found in respecting one's ancestors and fighting. If you die fighting for what you believe to be right, then you're basically guaranteed an entrance into heaven. But what does this actually mean for the people in Skyrim then? Well, it means that giving up on a war that has now caused you to lose your god is completely unacceptable. For a Nord, accepting the banning of Talos instead of fighting to protect something you believe in literally means you will pass the rest of eternity as a wayward spirit in sadness, without your ancestors and family, and alone. You know where this is going, don't you? Of course you do. What always happens when you take someone's god away? A civil war. A faction of Nords leadered by a man named Ulfric Stormcloak arose with the purpose of liberating Skyrim from the Empire so that they may pursue worship of Talos and of course, so that they may self-rule like the olden days. The faction known as the Stormcloaks would fight against the Empire in many skirmishes within the Skyrim region until a moment in time. A spectacular, unique moment in time. Faded, some would say. A group of Stormcloaks were captured, Ulfric included. While on their way to the Executioner's Block, however, a legend would rise. A mysterious individual whose purpose was yet to be ascertained. A person with no backstory, no family to speak of was found wandering the area. Of course, the Empire captured said individual thinking of him as Stormcloak. Really just wrong place at the wrong time. Or maybe, just maybe, the precise moment in the perfect location. Let's start with the story of Elder Scrolls Skyrim. Stormcloak, the true High King. Ulfric? The Jarl of Windhelm? You're the leader of the Rebellion. But if they captured you... Oh gods, where are they taking us? I don't know where we're going, but Sovngarde awaits. The Stormcloaks surmised that they were probably being taken all the way out of Skyrim and into Cyrodiil to make some kind of show of it. You know, to show the populace in the Imperial City what happens to traitors. To boost morale and such, when in reality the Empire was scared. Giving a trial to such a popular and empowered individual such as Ulfric Stormcloak would be tricky and definitely risky. Suffice to say, the Elvish Thalmor that now had free reign over the region, as per the peace treaty, were not happy with what was about to unfold. Ulfric Stormcloak. Some here in Helgen call you a hero, but a hero doesn't use a power like the voice to murder his king and usurp his throne. You started this war, plunged Skyrim into chaos, and now the Empire is going to put you down and restore the peace. The unceremonious decapitation of the traitor, hidden from view, would bolster the Empire and unite the region. And as the headsmen started chopping heads, it became the Dragonborn's turn to die. But prophecy has a way of intervening, or was it merely luck? 
A smarter person than me once said, Prophecy tells what may be, not what it should be. But why am I even talking about prophecy? We have just started. Well, because what is about to unfold would prophesy the end of the world, the coming of something great and destructive. What in oblivion is that? Sentries, what do you see? It's in the clouds! Dragon! <laughs> Out of nowhere, a dragon showed up, bringing with it obliteration and havoc. An unseen force of death, not found in centuries. The Nords used to be told of these creatures in children's stories, legends and myths. That one day dragons would come to devour the world. But nobody wanted to believe. Believe that they even existed. And now... The truth dawned, and it dawned in fire. The small town of Helgen was engulfed in flames as everyone ran for their lives. The miraculous arrival of this ancient creature had helped the Dragonborn and Ulfric Stormcloak escape from the Imperials, cementing the beginning of the legend of this era. I keep interrupting, and I apologize, though after this one we should be good for a while. We need to talk about what's canon and what's not. See, the world of Skyrim is huge, with a lot to do, a lot of people to help, and many, many possibilities for the Dragonborn. We will simply tell the story of what most certainly happened to the Dragonborn, the main story, for it is the one thing that we can most definitely say is canon, since it would be unrealistic and to be quite frank, a little far-fetched for this individual to have done everything that there is to do in this province, without even mentioning the fact that most side quests would certainly contradict one another. The example in here, of course, is that the Dragonborn is helped to escape by either a Stormcloak soldier or an Imperial soldier. A choice made by the player. The choice in here will allow you to hear the respective narrative, of course, helping you empathize with their struggle and will yield a quest to side with their side in the Civil War. It is believed that the Dragonborn took no sides in these conflicts, and was a neutral agent during this era. Whether that is actually true or not is not for us to really know, and highly debated. Do know that from now on, I will try and stay within the purview of the main story, of what is canon. On that same boat, I would like to say it is very likely that the Dragonborn was a Nord, not because we have a specific moment in the game where that becomes clear, but mostly from outside sources and gamer intuition. The marketing material for the game shows us what is most likely a Nord. When you create your character, it defaults to a Nord. And of course, much of the story makes more sense if you're a Nord. That being said, the Dragonborn was found and caught by the Imperials trying to cross the border. We don't know if he was leaving Skyrim or entering it, though regardless of his actual lineage, the game seems to allude that this is the character's first time in Skyrim, though that is also highly debated. If you would like to watch the full two-hour video, then be sure to head on over to patreon.com slash mrrex, where the video is available to all patrons. Otherwise, stay tuned as we will continue to upload the rest throughout the next couple of weeks every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Lastly, I would like to thank Dylan Baker, Toby Oliver and Alex Fitchie for supporting me on Patreon and allowing this to happen. Thank you very much.